welcome everyone uh, to the program and uh, thank you all for your interest in uh, TWI. Uh, as the uh, uh, introductions have just mentioned, I think you're going to get a lot out of uh, today's presentations. Um, what I'd like to do uh, in this first uh, hour or so is to uh, give an overview of the TWI programs, where they come from, and some of the connections. And in particular, to follow up on what Oscar was saying, you know, why TWI? You know, why is this such a, a powerful program that uh, he wishes he had, uh, you know, when he was facing change uh, uh, many years ago? And I think uh, what we can do to begin with is to go back to what we like to call principles uh, and how leading people through timeless principles is really the key uh, to success. Um, you know, Stephen Covey uh, once uh, said, uh, uh, you know, principles are like lighthouses. They, uh, you know, we we don't break them. We break ourselves against them. Um, but uh, they help to guide us uh, through the rocky passages of uh, life and uh, the, the twists and turns that life takes us through. Uh, and when we stick to principles, uh, then we can um, uh, have better success overall in life. But he also, Stephen Covey also said there are three constants in life, and that is change, choice, and principles. We've already talked about change. Uh, Oscar pointed that out to us. Or as they, they like to say, you know, the only constant that we have in life is change. So that's something that we have to deal with. But we also have two other things. We have choice. We can choose uh, our response uh, to those changes. And when we make choices uh, that are based on principles, principles are things that don't change. They stay constant uh, through millennium. You know, then we make uh, better choices. And so what we're looking at uh, uh, in terms of facing the challenge of a future ready workforce is what are those principles that can guide us through this change. And I think um, you, all of you listening would agree that one thing that employees get discouraged with are, you know, what we call flavor of the month jingos and programs. And, you know, we take them through the next uh, popular thing that will uh, hopefully guide them forward, but it just turns out to be a disappointment. And that's because we haven't focused on timeless principles that, you know, hold true um, throughout uh, throughout generations, throughout the millennium of mankind. And I think that's where TWI uh, is, it has become such a, a lasting program because it's based on these on these foundational uh, principles. Um, what is a principle? You know, principles are are things that uh, always are true. Um, uh, an example might be the golden rule: you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And that's a, a timeless principle that when we follow it. Um, will give us uh, uh, good results, um, things like that, uh, which guide us. And so let's take a look at what those, uh, where TWI comes from and what kinds of principles it's based on. Um, you may know that uh, TWI was uh, founded during World War II. Um, and that was a case, uh, you know, where um, they had uh, an inspiration, you know, to uh, create uh, leadership programs because uh, we knew during the war that, all of the manufacturing uh, would for the war, you know, the, the ships and the airplanes and the guns and the tanks and bullets and uniforms and so on. That manufacturing would have to take place here in the United States to supply uh, the armies around the world. Unfortunately, though, uh, all of the men and they were men, you know, who were working in those shipyards and factories uh, uh, went to the war and they had to be replaced. Uh, uh, in, in, in the majority of cases uh, by women, women who had never had any job at all, much less a job in a factory or a shipyard. And of course, that's where you know, we get the famous uh, history of Rosie the Riveter. Um, but uh, the founders of TWI knew, uh, the people who were running this wartime production knew that they would have to take a different approach than was traditionally taken in terms of how we treated uh, people coming into the factory. They needed uh, basically uh, a program that was founded on solid principles, principles that work every time, that would inspire dedication from this new workforce, you know, in a very difficult situation, and also, of course, create those results. And so basically, they needed to build a leadership program that would strengthen teamwork and guide them through these uh, changes. Well, jump forward to the end of the war. It was a huge uh, success, a fantastic success. The whole production of the wartime, you know, it's a famous part of our uh, history. You know, the uh, 
the, the production in the United States, you know, that was spurred on by the TWI program, you know, was by historians was said to um, reduce uh, the uh, war by two to three years. And as you can see, um, just take a look at those results that we have here on the screen. It was an incredible success in, in all aspects. And it was such a success um, that after the war, um, it was uh, introduced uh, to uh, countries all over the world, um, but most uh, famously uh, in Japan. Uh, the Americans were in the occupation time in the, in the early 50s, and uh, General MacArthur uh, brought uh, um, TWI, you know, along with other things like uh, Dr. Deming, famously Dr. Deming went to Japan, but also TWI. Um, and uh, it was embraced by all of the Japanese companies, Sanyo, you know, where I worked, um, but uh, famously at Toyota, uh, Taichi Ono was looking to uh, develop uh, his uh, to, uh, Toyota production system, which was founded on um, uh, standard work. You know, we had the uh, pleasure, I was in Japan um, uh, in December of late last year with some TOA colleagues. We had the uh, opportunity to meet Mr. Kato, who was the, the TWI uh, trainer, actually the, the head of all training in Toyota but in particular TWI. And he told us some stories about how in the early 50s, Taiichi Ono understood that he needed to get pack time, but he couldn't manage that because he did not have standards in the workplace. And so he struggled mightily uh, to understand how the work was done and to develop standards. And um, he said that when TWI came in, you know, then it was then and only then that they were in, able to really grasp a hold of getting control of standard work. They had a way of writing it down. They had a way of understanding it and passing it on to other um, people. So TWI was a, a cornerstone in the development of, of standard work, which, as you all know, is really the foundation of what we call lean today or Toyota production um, systems. So what is TWI? Um, if we go back to uh, the early, actually the early part of the last century, um, uh, in the early days of the um, Industrial Revolution, um, people were looking at what does it take to be successful, you know, in a manufacturing setting. And again, this was the early days of the manufacturing of the Industrial Revolution. And they said that supervisors basically would need have five needs, five needs, including two kinds of knowledge and three kinds of skill. And you can see this on the chart here. Um, of course, uh, you know, you have to have knowledge of your work. You have to understand your business and um, uh, what it takes to get done. And as a supervisor, you have as a member of management, you have to understand your responsibilities, the rules and regulations, the organization chart and how things work and so on. And these two kinds of knowledge would have to be learned locally. Um, every industry has their own uh, aspects of work. Uh, every company or organization has its own model for rules and regulations and so on. So those things would have to be learned locally. The skills, on the other hand, were universal. And these skills included things, uh, three things, uh, skill and in instructing. You know, we'd have to be able to instruct and train our people to do the work. Um, and look at this next one, uh, skill and improving methods, how to do work better. Um, this is what we call Kaizen today and oftentimes thought of as a something Japanese, uh, there's a Japanese word for it. But actually, we were thinking about this uh, going back uh, uh, to World War II and, and before that. And then finally, uh, skill in leading, how to lead people and uh, create motivation and dedication for work. And then there was a common element to all of these things. Um, there are five needs, but there, the common element to all of them was safety. We had to do them in a safe environment. So what the TWI founders did then, since um, the uh, knowledge pieces had to be learned locally, but the skills were universal, they came up with a, three training programs, one for each of those um, skills that would be needed by supervisors to lead the workforce. And they created three train, uh, three uh, what we call the Jake programs. So in turn, for the skill in instructing, they created the job instruction training program. We're going to hear more about each of these programs as the day goes on. So let me just give you a, I'm just giving a general overview at this point. You'll get much more details um, as our program goes on throughout the day. But the job instruction training program 
uh, was developed in order to um, create a well-trained workforce by getting people to quickly uh, remember to do jobs safely, uh, correctly, and conscientiously. And uh, then the, in terms of the skill and improving methods, they created the job methods training program. And that was a program that was developed um, to um, help uh, supervisors uh, work with their people in order to use the resources that we currently have today, the manpower, the machinery, the methods, and to be able to do it better in order to create uh, more quickly, better quality products in less time, you know, by using the resources now available. So we'll talk about how that gets done uh, later today. And then finally, uh, in terms of skill and leading, they created a job relations uh, training program. And that was a program that was uh, developed in order to um, help supervisors build relationships with people so that they can um, bring out uh, the dedication and motivation um, uh, to doing um, the work. And I think these three training programs combined um, really create that leadership program that Oscar was referring to. It gives us uh, the, it gives frontline supervisors the real skills that they need in order to face the challenges of um, the work that they're doing and changes that uh, continue coming at them uh, relentlessly uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, one more thing before we move on, um, there was another program, a fourth J program called Job Safety. That was actually developed in Japan by the Japanese, um, but it follows um, the same format that I'm gonna uh, lay out here for you in a second of all the other uh, J programs. But as you remember from the five needs model, the job safety was a, uh, a segment of uh, a portion of each of the five needs. Um, but in particular, the job safety program focuses on how we can uh, prevent uh, problems, safety accidents and incidents uh, from happening. And so um, that was a fourth J program that was developed uh, in Japan by the Japanese. And then just one more thing. Um, after the J programs went to Japan in the early mid 50s, the Japanese uh, government actually asked the TWI trainers at the time if they could help them with a uh, issue that they were having, which was problem solving. And so um, the TWI developers there in Japan created the problem solving program, which actually um, combines uh, the three J programs, job instruction, job methods, job relations, into a kind of a unified model of solving problems. Uh, and again, you'll hear uh, more about this program later. Mm -hmm.